back to the F12 TDF. This thing is ridiculous. Look at that. Oh, the relationship. The relationship between the engine and the gearbox is sublime. Anyway, we're holding off on that for a, just, just a few more miles and then I can immerse you fully. I'm gonna dunk you, actually submerge your ear holes in the V12 delights that emit from this ridiculous engine. But today, as the title would suggest, is an equally monumental day because we are on our way to McLaren HQ, MTC, McLaren Technology Center, to collect a new McLaren 720S. Big, big day. But first of all, the reason that I'm in the F12 TDF, two reasons. Um, I've got to put some miles on this car. I know you guys keep asking about it. The reason we haven't done the first drive video in this car yet is because it needs to get to 1,000 miles before I can really open up and fully explore and exploit the 9,000 RPM V12 Symphony that descends from Maranello. Until that point, I've got to basically run the car in. Now, on this trip, it's about a 200 mile round trip. So by the time that I have returned from Woking with a McLaren 720S, this car is gonna be ran in. So it's a significant day on both sides of things. One, we're picking up a brand new car. Two, the F12 TDF shall be ran in. And then we're gonna start planning the proper first drive video of this car. It's funny, it doesn't matter what piece of content I put up lately, the first comment is always, where's the TDF? <laughs> and I agree with you. More than anybody, I wanna provide you with this content on this car, but I've had to run it in. I wanna respect and uh, provide mechanical sympathy to this wonderful engine to make sure that it stands the test of time. Because once it's run in, I'm gonna be grabbing it by the scruff of its neck and giving you guys the full V12 showdown. But until then, I'm gonna run it in nicely. And in my experience, running in engines is much more important than it might sound. Previous engines which I've owned and ran in and maintained properly, they consume less oil, they have less problems, they're more fuel efficient, they're generally just a more reliable, healthier block. This is a very special engine. We've got a 14 to 1 compression ratio and under quite a lot of stress. And I don't want to take liberties with it too early. I've got this car forever. <laughs> And then we'll be able to give you bursts like this. <laughs> that was 7,000 RPM. We've got two more remaining. What you may or may not have picked up on there is how much base there is up towards the upper echelons of the rev range. It's a phenomenal thing. Anyway, as I mentioned, I can't be uh, dabbling with those kind of revs for too long. Until it's done a thousand, on our way back, it will have done a thousand. Um, and then it's all about the first drive video. But until then, let's head down to Woking and collect a McLaren 720S. this day. Look where I'm collecting this car from. This is the mothership MTC McLaren Technology Center and this is my new long-term McLaren 720S. So here it is. So I've been trying to keep this one quite quiet for a while because truth be told, I didn't know when this car was going to be ready. McLaren said, look, if you want a special collection, there's nowhere better than to collect a McLaren from McLaren HQ itself. I am right in the motherland of this fantastic brand. Through those doors is the history. There's actual racing cars through there that have built the foundation of this amazing company. And when McLaren said that you can come and collect this car from the very doors where a lot of the success of this brand has been built, I mean, what do you say? So 
There's going to be a lot of this car on the channel in the coming months. The idea is that I'm going to be sharing with you ultimately what it's like to live with a McLaren 720S. Now I know there's been, uh, this car has been featured on my channel a few times, but there's nothing like living with and taking it on road trips and track days and experiences and really unfolding the underlayers of a car to truly share the, the, the real characteristics. Up until now, I haven't spent too much time with a 600 LT, but right now this is my favorite McLaren my 675 LT, I ran that for 12 months, I did 10,000 miles in it, and it blew me away. But when I got to drive this car for the first time, the funny thing was I didn't quite understand it. The reason being was everybody was comparing it with the 675 LT because it's so ballistically fast, it's so capable. And so when I approached it, I expected it to be a sort of uh, successor to the 675 LT because on paper and in reality it's a faster car but the ethos is actually a successor to the 650s and it's very hard to believe it's very hard to draw parallels between those two cars because they've evolved this thing so far that it's so hard to believe that this is the successor to a 650s it's a successor because it's such a dailyable practical a supercar one day there's going to be an LT version of this car and right now if it wasn't for me driving the Senna a few weeks ago, I don't know where they would take this thing. The Senna recalibrated my uh, appreciation for the kind of performance you could extrapolate from a car that wears number plates, as did this when I first drove it. And the trick with this is, it also does it in luxury and style. It's such a beautiful, elegant shape. It's one of those cars that for me has grown on me. When I first saw it, I wasn't too sure about it, but the more that I've seen them on the road, the more photography I've seen of them, the more that I fell in love with the overall ethos of this car. And that's the idea. I want to live with one. I've loved it since I drove it, but it didn't click with me until I accepted that this is a daily driver supercar. Coincidentally, I have another daily driver supercar, which is the 991 GT3 Gen 2 also in a very similar blue. This is Fistral blue. My GT3 is Miami blue. Uh, and that I have also classed as one of the best daily driver sports cars in the world. So the idea is we're gonna live with these two head to head. And I'm not sure this has ever been done, a long-term head to head of a daily supercar sports car combo. So that's gonna unfold on the channel. And of course, we're gonna have some incredible adventures along the way. So let's hop in the car and I shall talk you through it more on the journey home following the TDF, no less. <laughs> this is so surreal. I've just realized something as well, actually. Driving a Ferrari in and out of McLaren, it feels a bit weird. It feels like I'm bringing the enemy into sacred quarters. Anyway, to be able to drive in and out of McLaren automotive at any stage is fantastic, but be able to be able to drive in in an F12 TDF and drive out in a McLaren 720S is next level ridiculous. So this is now the journey home where I get to settle in. Now, as I mentioned, I have been fortunate enough to spend quite a lot of time in 720Ss in the past, but never this amount of time. We've got this for a long time, which means I'm gonna be able to bring you a lot of value and insights as to what it's like to live with a car like this. But let's just go through briefly the spec of the car. But basically this is running the full carbon pack. The exterior has pretty much every carbon option ticked as does the interior. So much so that the glass windows which form your typical 720S have been replaced with plates of carbon. And as a result, the contrast against this Fistral Blue is magnificent. The other thing about Fistral Blue is that while on camera and in overcast light, light like this, it might look like a flat turquoise blue, it's actually a metallic flecked blue. So imagine Miami, but with a metallic fleck in it. It's a really special paint. I think it suits this car wonderfully and it really shows off the sort of organic flowing sculpture of the bodywork on this car. And something else that you will have noticed and what are incredibly familiar to me are these carbon bucket seats. Every option on this car, it's just carbon, 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 but it felt so familiar when I got inside it. It felt just like I was slipping back into my 675 LT. But this time, we're in something with even more power, even lighter weight, better performance. And if, if there was ever a car which, despite the fact that 
they do offer a more luxurious type of touring themed pack for this car. If there was ever a car that warranted sports seats, it's this car. The performance, every time I drive one of these, I sort of scratch my head in disbelief that they are allowing number plates to go on a car with this performance. And so yes, under heavy braking and cornering, it's wonderful to have a very supportive lateral seat that's there for you. And the other thing that I'm in interacting with is extended carbon shift paddles, carbon on the upper and lower wheel center. I'm gonna love driving this and it complements it because we are in mono cell two. This is uh, an evolution of the fundamental platform and chassis that uh, is the 720S underpinnings. And a lot of that shell comes through into the design of the car itself. So these A pillars here that have exposed carbon, that's not a piece of carbon, that's the actual tub. You can see the fundamental structure of the, the tub and all of that exposed weave carbon ties in lovely with all of the carbon extras on this car. Yeah, excited to spend time with this. Just doesn't do today justice at all. I can't wait to share these adventures. For clarification, I haven't bought this car. So over the last 12 months, I've been working very closely with McLaren. And the projects which you have seen are the ones where I've helped launch new cars. So if you were following the channel around Geneva, I did uh, a live broadcast of the Senna GTR, which they launched there, which was incredible to be part of that launch and interview uh, key members of the Ultimate Series program, which were responsible for the Senna GTR. And then just a few weeks ago, I was honored to be invited to present the launch of their new 600 LT. Now I got the world's first drive of that car up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. That car blew me away, but I'm still interested in this car and I wanted to spend some more time with it. And with me working closely with them, they very kindly said, look, why don't you spend some time with this car if you end up buying it, fantastic, but ultimately it's just great to be able to give you guys just wicked content, great entertainment and in insights. And when it becomes your own, this is a long-termer. We're going to be treating it as my own car for the foreseeable future. I'm really gonna be seeing what this thing's like to live with. Also, do not think that I've forgotten about the red thing following me behind. No, one of the main reasons, as I mentioned, for me driving down in the TDF to collect the 720 is all about putting much needed miles on the car. On this very drive, that car is about to click over 1,000 miles. And you know what that means. That means it's fully ran in. We can take it all the way to the 9,000 RPM red line and the drivetrain is outstanding. And that's what the running period's been all about. Bedding it in, setting it up, ready for a big first drive video. Obviously, I haven't forgotten about it. I'm aware that no matter what piece of content I put up since I've had that car, everyone's been asking about the TDF, myself included. I'm like, I just need to get home to put some miles on the car. This has been the trip. It's been a very, very good day. So now we're over a thousand miles. One of the next videos is going to be the first drive of the TDF. Now the logistics surrounding that video are more complex than my average. I'm taking it somewhere special. We're going to go big. It's a car that deserves it and I want to do it right. So stay tuned for that. Please subscribe because I do not want you to miss the first drive video of the TDF. I'm going to be putting a lot of effort into it. It's going to mean a lot to me and I hope that you guys appreciate it. So we've got cars a go go. We've got cars coming out of our ears right now. Uh, so the content over the next few months is going to be next level, particularly with this, particularly with the F12 TDF. Um, yeah, so subscribe and like this video if you like what you're seeing on the channel right now. Uh, it's your support that helps this channel grow. And as always, I'm eternally thankful, but it's those likes and those comments that sees us thrive and ultimately opens the doors to experiences like this that I can share with you. So guys, as always, Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao! <laughs>